So you're writing a robotics conference paper. Here are some basic practical tips you can use to maximize the chances it will get accepted. There are a variety of types of robotics conference papers, but really there are two primary categories. One is where you're doing a familiar task that has already been done by many other people before you and you're doing it better in some manner. The other type of paper is you're doing a completely new task or goal or objective and no one's really done it before. And the type of paper that you're writing affects some of the things you should put into it. So if you're doing a task that has been done before by many other people, you need to show that your approach is better in some respect, either better results or a better approach or a new elegant theory. There needs to be some significant differentiation between what you're proposing and what has already been done in the field. If you're doing a completely new thing, then the primary responsibility you have is to convince the robotics field that this topic you're working on is relevant and topical to robots. And then you need to also show that what you're doing is sensible and has some value. You need to know the background context in which your research is placed inside out, including the subtle nuances. So for example, if you motivate some localization research that you're doing by saying it's relevant in autonomous vehicles, that's not particularly compelling. If you can say instead that your research is specifically improving, for example, the worst case performance of a localization system and explain why that particular property is especially relevant for safe operation of autonomous vehicles, that is a much more compelling argument to build into your paper. When writing your paper, you should be aware of the key contributions that you are claiming. And as always, the more specific you can make these contributions, the better. So if you just say, for example, you are improving localization performance, that is a very broad, very inspecific claim. But perhaps you have a system that doesn't require as much training data. Perhaps you have a system that doesn't require any training data at all. Maybe your approach is extremely computationally efficient and can run on very cheap hardware. Perhaps you have an approach that uses an innovative sensor that affords you new possibilities that aren't afforded by traditional sensors like cameras and LiDAR. The more specific you can be about the contributions and the novelty of the contributions, the better. One of the primary purposes of the opening parts of the paper is to convince your reader that the research you're doing isn't just worthy, but it, that it hasn't already been done. Now, there are two ways to do this. One is to effectively insult the former work of colleagues, and the other way is to do it in a more positive framework. So pointing out all of the progress that has been made, the advances that have been achieved, but then highlighting that there are still some substantial challenges left to solve, and that this is what the research you are presenting in this paper is all about. One of the key things to remember is to not die on any unnecessary hills. So what that means is you will be making claims throughout your paper that help motivate the particular direction you've taken the research in. But it's important to only make the claims that are absolutely critical to justifying why you've done the research that you've chosen to do. So, for example, if you're working in the localization space, do you really need to make the claim that for example, autonomous vehicles will be everywhere throughout the world in five years time? Or can you make other claims like service robotics or mobile robots that also motivate the need to advance the state of the art in localization systems? The other thing to remember when writing your paper is being very aware of the type of primary contributions you are claiming you are making. So generally speaking, this breaks down into three categories. One, you can be contributing some very clever, elegant new theoretical approaches or methodical approaches in the robotics field. Two, you could have some amazing extensive experimental results that show that your system is massively outperforming the previous state of the art. Or three, you could have a system that just does something so self-evidently cool and that hasn't been done before that it sells itself. Now, ideally you have all three of those things, but that is very, very rare. So the thing to remember is that you can trade off performance in one of those categories for another. So if you have an extremely strong experimental paper with mind-blowing results, then perhaps your theoretical contributions don't have to be so strong. 
Likewise, if you have an amazing, elegant, compelling new theoretical approach to solving a problem, perhaps your experimental results don't need to be quite as comprehensive uh, or compelling. The key thing to remember is you don't want to have mediocre contributions across all three of these areas. If you have strength in one area, it can compensate for weakness in another area, but if you're not strong in any of those areas, you're going to struggle to get the paper accepted. Most robotics papers will have some sort of experimental evaluation component. Ideally, that experimental evaluation is at least partially performed live on real robots in the physical world. If you can't do that, can you gather compelling, challenging, large-scale data sets from robots and show that your system works really well on those data sets? Another key consideration is you need to show the readers and the community that the results you've achieved weren't just a fluke. And often that involves showing that your system works on a second or third set of experiments or data sets. Now those additional data sets don't necessarily have to be as huge or as comprehensive as that first flagship data set, but it is important to show that your system is working across a range of conditions. Honesty and openness about the shortcomings of your system are also very much appreciated by the community because they show the reader a complete balanced impression of what your system can and can't do and makes it much easier for people who follow on your research to pick what they focus on. So listing openly and honestly your limitations is a key component of many good papers. Finally, as you get closer to submission and you have a complete, relatively polished draft, one of the really powerful tricks you can use is to go through the draft paragraph by paragraph and check that every paragraph has a single, coherent, clear message and that message is critical to the story of the paper. If it's not, you may need to break up the paragraphs, you may even consider removing them, but essentially for each paragraph, you should be able to give a short one sentence summary of the key message that that paragraph is conveying. These are just some of the practical tips and tricks you can use to substantially improve the quality and contribution of your paper and hence improve its chances of being accepted into a top robotics conference venue. Happy paper writing.